Mark Guy joins us. He's a good old mate. He's an absolute legend of this game. Presents his own radio program, of course, on the NRL every Friday night. And another season upon us, mate. As good as it gets, isn't it? Well, it is. It's um, you know, it's it's the kickoff of uh, a season which is has a lot of expectation. Um, you know, the new franchise, the Dolphins are in, and um, all eyes will be on them. All eyes will be on the Tigers. All eyes will be on. The Bulldogs with their recruitment drive in the off-season. I suppose all eyes will be on your mob, the, the Warriors, because the first full season they have it are playing a, a, a genuine home and away season. So um, can't wait for it, Marty. Can't wait. Yeah, look, let's park the Warriors for a second. I want to ask you all about that. I want to go back to your mob to start with. The last time any team won three in a row, as you well remember, made as Parramatta in the 1980s. It's so difficult to repeat, and then I don't even imagine how difficult it, it would be to repeat to repeat. So what are the prospects for the Panthers? Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, and, and back then in the in 81, 82, 83, there was no salary cap. So uh, you can see the carcass being picked at year after year from those guys who win competitions and unfortunately or well, fortunately for Penrith um, in the off season they lost six to seven players both from first grade and, and Premier League um, and the, uh, the coaching ranks as well with Cameron Serraldo so oh, look their prospects look good as well, they've got the best player in the world in, in Nathan Cleary in my opinion um, they've got one of the best front rowers in the, in the competition and one of the best lock forwards and, and fullback. So as far as spines go, um, which I think we we kind of determine whether a team is going to go well or not these days. This new this new fashionable word called the spine. Um, I think Penrith's got the best spine. Um, the outside of you know probably Abby Corrissey not being there. Um, this young kid called Sony Luke is going to be anything. He's going to be the, uh, the deputy to, to Mitch Kenny in the in the dummy half role. So. Look, it's going to look, no, there's no illusions, Marty. It's going to be very hard, very, very bloody hard to, to go back to back to back. But if any team can do it, I think it's the mountain men. Who are the main rivals then? Is it the usual suspects? Obviously, Melbourne are going to be there. Parramatta have got so close. But you also mentioned the Bulldogs there. So who are the usual suspects and who should we watch out for? Um, Melbourne, always Melbourne with Craig Bellamy there. Um, I think the Roosters... Um, you know, if they can, they can remain injury and, and, and suspension free. Um, the Rabbitohs, I think, if the Tron Mitchell can put 20 games on the paddock, I think they can win the comp. Um, with him, you know, being a mainstay, probably likewise, um, someone, someone like Manly, if Tommy Turbo can stay healthy, uh, there's no reason why they can't go deep into September either. So, yeah, you've got the usual suspects, but also, um, there's a lot of buzz about the Tigers, a lot of a lot of buzz about the, the Bulldogs this year. Um, there's, there's been such an influx of players who they've obtained. Um, and Benji Marshall being the the assistant coach or, or coach of Tigers with Tim Sheens is quite the, quite the story as well. So, uh, look, I think there's, there's, there's six or seven teams that can win it. Um, and they'll, they'll all be chasing the Panthers. And I think um, we're in for one of them seasons where I think expect the unexpected. What about the Eels? You didn't mention them in that uh, that little bit of conversation. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I worry about the Eels for, for the simple fact that in these opening few rounds, they're without Madison. Um, he, he, he opted to get, take a suspension and instead of paying the $4,000 fine for the grand final. They lost Nia Kaur, who's gone to the Warriors. They lost Reed Marnie, and that's, that's a big loss. Um, you know, I think that's a bigger loss, as big a loss as Penrith losing Coruscant. You, 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 your number nine these days is the man who has their hand on the ball more times than anyone else in the game. And if your dummy half isn't up to premiership winning contention, well, you're going to be in, in for a long year. So um, I, I, I like what the dogs have done with him. I like, you know, like Parramatta, yeah, I, I think they're going to be. I think they're going to be in the eight. But I, I think their window was kind of closed last year. That that game they played against the Cowboys in the prelim to get to the grand final was, I think, their grand final. And I think that once they got to, uh, the, to Penrith in the grand final, Penrith played the ultimate game. They played the the best game they played all season. And unfortunately for Parramatta, um, it happened to be in the grand final. But I'll be there about. I'm not. I'm not discounting them. But there's all. Where, where, where there's clubs. Who have a bit of contract saga 
hang, hanging over their head like Parramatta do at the moment with Mitchell Moses. I don't think it's good for their, I don't think it's good for club morale when you don't know where one of your star marquee players is going to be for the for the foreseeable future. My, my money's on that he'll stay with the Eels, but it's a, it's still not good for co- cohesion uh, leading up to a, a, a massive game like they've got tomorrow night. Mark Gyra is with us talking NRL all underway and it's just been such a long wait or it feels like it's been such a long wait. Let's go north of the border, mate. Queensland. Three teams up there now. Who's going to be top dog up there? And can anyone do a Cowboys? I mean, that's the question. Last year, what, they were the wooden spooners the year before or near enough and then turn around and make make a, a, a hell of a fist of it and get to third place. I mean, is anyone going to do that again? Well, if anyone can do it, I think that might be the Tigers who come last last year. Um, and I think they could on a bit of momentum. Um, I think the Broncos are going to be a lot better with Carrigan being a mainstay, with Phil and Cobbo and Rex Walsh obviously coming over there from the Warriors. Um, I think that adds a lot of dimension in their attack. They've got a full attack that can hold most most teams with Payne Haas and Flegler and, um, you know, Capewell. And, um, it, it all depends on the health of their captain, uh, Reynolds. You know, if Reynolds can stay fit, uh, Adam Reynolds can stay fit and healthy. Well, they're going to be a contender as well. So um, the Cowboys can do it again. I, I, I've got no doubt they'll be thereabouts. Um, the Titans, they're one of them teams that can finish between 7th and 17th. Um, and the Dolphins, a new franchise who everyone is, is speaking about. Everyone, you know, they just they just obtained two really good handy buys for next year, which are uh, Flagler and um, uh, the young Pommy import, which whose name is... Uh, Herbie Farnworth, uh, who's going to be there for the 2024 20, season. But, um, look, yeah, I, I think top dog in Queensland will, will again be the Cowboys. I think, um, you know, the, now they've got four teams in Queensland. Uh, the Cowboys seem to be the fittest. They're the lot. And, and then fitness these days, as we saw with Milford not being selected for the inaugural game of the Dolphins, uh, instead they've gone with Young Katoa to be the, the 5-8 for their, for their first ever game against the Roosters on, on Sunday. It says a lot about the, the, the mindset of what a, a, a modern-day rugby league player has to be number one at, and that's their fitness base. Their, their, their core fitness base has to be top-notch, and I think maybe going away in the Samoan uh, World Cup team might have hurt his team. He, he, he's chanced at some He's come back. He's had a, he's had a, a late start to the off-season, um, and young Milford's been behind the eight ball ever since. So uh, it's going to be intriguing, Marty, about... Um, they had the four teams down in Queensland. Obviously, they're going to be underdogs again for, for Origin, as they always are. Yep. Um, these, opening, these opening few rounds will, will give us a good indication of exactly how well each uh, each Queensland team will go. MG, let's turn our attention to the Warriors then. And every year, of course, we build it up, we hype it up. We, you know, we think that this is our year. We've been out to the Warriors this week and spoken to Adam Fonua Blake and Sean Johnson and the coach Andrew Webster. Let's talk about Webby for a start, mate, because you know him via the Panthers. I've been really impressed with this guy. Met him a couple of times. Uh, just He just seems to have an aura around him. And, uh, you know, just you, you kind of feel that he's done something with this squad. Whether that translates to, to wins or getting on a roll early, I don't know. But he seems to be the right guy in the right place. Is it the right time, though? Well, I think it's a very, I think it's a fantastic acquisition for the Warriors. Um, you you know, Webster was a caretaker coach for a few games with the Tigers and a few years back. Um, now he's been in the in the Penrith system for for three or four years under under both Cleary and Serraldo, and he's learnt so much. Um, I like what I've seen in the trials of the Warriors. Uh, their, their forward pack, we just know that they're you know, You mentioned Phil Blake. You, you've got um, Barnett, who I think is a great signing um, from the from the Knights as well. I think they've, I think they've recruited really well. Um, it's, it, it, look, you, you mentioned jo- Sean Johnson. Um, the blowtorch will be firmly on him from the open game. It always is. When you're such a good player, when you're such an en- enigmatic player as he is, um, his very, very best compared to his very, very worst um, is starting to get a lot a lot more of a, cra- a crevice in the, in, in, in the size of it. Um, he's got to be more involved in games. He's, he's got to be the man. Um, they've got a team that can upset a lot of teams. I... I, I, again, they remind me a lot of Canberra, uh, the Warriors. They can finish anywhere between you know sixth and sixteenth in the competition. It depends on what Warriors team you know, turns up. But I think one thing is for sure that their attack will be a lot better 
than years gone by because the fact that uh, Andrew Webster has been Penrith's attacking coach for the last few seasons, and we all know how good their attack's been. So uh, the Panthers, that is. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm excited by what, the, what we're going about, what we're going to see from the Warriors, and I'm more excited that the Warriors fans, after what seems like an eternity, get their team back on home deck for a, a, a proper home and away season. Oh, MG, as soon as we start talking about it again, mate, what are the what are what are we as fans going to see that's going to be different this year? Just in the way that the game is played or the speed of the game, is there anything that you can think of that you think, okay, watch out for this? You got to, you, the good teams have a really good um, link up with their fellow forwards. Um, when I say that, so that you, you watch Penrith, for instance, with the the, the benchmark Isaiah Yo in his little tip-ons to. Um, Leota and, and Fisher Harris and Liam Martin and uh, kick out when he was there. He was kind of a link player, but he was also can had that option of being a really good ball player, ball runner. Um, I was, I've noticed already at the Tigers that David Clemens passed the ball more in two trials than he has in three years being at the, the Knights. So look for for Noel Blake um, to, 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 to to be a really good ball player. Look for Barnett to do the same thing. Um, don't just be battering ram boys. You, you can't just you can't just be a battering ram because you've got number eight, and number ten on your back. You've got to be able to play subtle uh, passing games as well to your to your halves um, because they need your help. Obviously, forwards win games for for teams. The the, the cherry on top is the back line, the crisp passing between uh, the backs, and they and and all good teams wingers should score tries because all the heavy lifting is done in the middle. Um, so early on, look for some. Look for some ball play between the forwards, and then you'll know that this, this is a different team. And the first trial they played um, stood out for mine because um, their, their ball movement was a lot, lot more um, free flowing, and, and it looked really, really um, silky, silky smooth. So if they can keep that up, you know, I, I, I give them a really good chance of making this year's eight. I, and I, I don't say it because I'm speaking to you on New Zealand radio. Sure. I, I say that, I say it because I, I believe it. MG, listen to yourself, mate. You're talking about front row forwards turning into subtle, silky ball carriers and being able to slip passes. I'm thinking of Blocker, I'm thinking Spud, I'm thinking of the Chief, and I'm thinking of Big Sam Backo, mate. They'd be sitting there looking at you going, what, what's happened to you, Mark? Yeah, mate, I'm getting old, mate. Come on. You know that once you hit 50, everything drops. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting, I'm turning soft. I, I'm... <laughs> so... Oh, look, before we leave, I've got to say that I saw your boy uh, being interviewed after one of those pre-season matches. Chip off the old block. I know that you've got a tribe of daughters as well, mate, but what a handsome-looking young man he is. Lucky that missus is good-looking. Yeah, mate, yeah, you're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. Mav, uh, Mav's in, yeah, he'll start with New South Wales Cup uh, this weekend. He's in, the, he's in this number 11 jersey for them, and uh, let's hope that he can, he can force his way into the, the top side sometime this year. Um, he, he, he's trained... He's had a really good off season, Marty. Um, he's, he hasn't missed a session where last year um, he was a little bit injury riddled with a uh, dislocated elbow and a, um, a broken thumb and, and a staff infection all in the same year. So he's had uh, touch wood. He's had a really good off season. And um, I can only hope that he, uh, he he gets to wear that number 11 in first grade because it's a, it's an honour when you wear the, the, the home team jersey in, in a first grade game running out in front of the parochial crowd. I know that you know you step back and you you know you let him do his own thing in that. But just to, how proud is it being a father looking at your son and thinking, my God, he might wear that jersey that I wore. Oh, it's it's all, it's, it's it's epic. It, it's it's you know it's um, it's kind of surreal because you you never think about it when they're growing up. You think about them as sportsmen and as kids, and the first thing is, is to be a good kid, um, and then good things will. I believe that good things happen to good people, and, and karma is is real if you. If you've got any, if you've got any shortcuts in your game, if you've got any shortcuts in life, well, they nine times out of ten you won't be dealt good cards. And um, for what I've seen over the last twelve months that Mav's done, um, good things are good things are coming his way. Finally, what about that cricket yesterday, mate? We've got a whole country that you know we've stopped. We had all of these floods and everything. I tell you what, sport can uplift you, can't it? It can change your, it can change your mindset. It can, it can just give you that rush, that buzz, those beautiful emotions, even if it's just for a moment. That's what it's meant to do. Mate, I was a left arm over the, uh, over the wicket bowl for Green Shield here in, in, in Sydney when I was sixteen. I was a pretty handy cricketer, a bit like Wagner was yesterday, taking the tail out. Um, 
I I was riveted. I was riveted for this whole series. I, I, I I've been watching top. Well, I, I think the top four teams in the world are, are all, you know, in, involved in Test match cricket at the moment. With Australia taking on India today, and uh, New Zealand and, and England, the other two teams that make up the top four, in my opinion, and to see them fight back after being you know, set in and, and forced to follow on, um, and Williamson cementing himself as I think the best batsman in the world. Um, they loved it. Loved every second of it. I, 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 I can only imagine what you guys... Um, Lucky, the young producer, was telling me that you guys went even longer. You've done a bit of overtime. Yeah, yesterday. done a bit of overtime, mate. Just kept it on because, I mean, you can't switch off the radio when you got when there's only two runs left. No, you can't, mate. Well done to, well done to the Kiwis. Um, is, there, is, that, is that it? Now it's only two tests or is there a decider? That's it. That's it, bro. Oh, come on. We want another one. We want another one of them. Another decider. And I suppose now Australia take on the, the Pommies in the Ashes, which is going to be a good series as well.